So I haven't been posting in a while. That is mostly because I'm in college. Well, we're trying to do something different here today. Mostly because I can't not post on YouTube because I feel guilty. <laughs> I'll try to like tone down the videos where I don't like have a script. But I can't avoid that now. And also, like, it's not like anyone really watches these things <laughs> or anything other than, like, my opinion. So I guess I'll just do what I want at this point. There might be a video coming up that is scripted and structured. And if any person listening to this has listened to any of the Secret Treehouse episodes recently, it's gonna be a lot. <laughs> it's gonna be a lot. But it feels like something I could find relaxing to do. I do a lot of things to relax. I draw sometimes, I write a lot, and one of the main things that I do to relax because I have- I am raw dog in life and <laughs> I have extreme anxiety. When I'm really really like deep in the depression spiral, I watch anime. I, I return to my base instincts and I watch anime. <laughs> Well, I haven't done it a lot recently. We, we don't have to talk about why it happened, but here's a here's just like a general list of like animated shows I've attached myself to when I needed it. Zero stakes serotonin. <laughs> because again, um like bringing it back to what I was like saying, my taste in anime has veered away from shonen to very specifically just slice of life. I don't know why, maybe it's because I've aged, sort of, I don't know. But I, I just completely lost interest and if I can get anything, anything like with more adult tones to it. So for example, there are two that are of the cooking variety and are oddly also both of the isekai variety. <laughs> Or transmigrator, I guess, is the, the other term that people would use. I am one of those people who don't get really hungry when I watch like cooking shows or cooking YouTube videos or cooking whatever. I don't get like residual hunger pangs when I see food. But I also really enjoy seeing the process of it and how it happens. And uh, saying this out loud, I know multiple people will roast me, however, comma, it's, it doesn't matter. They probably won't even watch this. One I favor more is Tonemo Skill. I have no idea what the like the longer title is. Like The thing with Isekai anime is just they're, they're, the, the, the titles are so fucking long. It's so bad. But Tonemo Skill is basically this guy gets teleported to another world and he gets this passive skill where he can access online shops and the, the world's currency he can use to buy things online. This is our world, online shops, and he gets teleported to a world where online shops don't even exist. They're they're basically medieval Europe, as always, because Japan just has this weird like fixation on medieval Europe <laughs> when it comes to fantasy. Whatever. That that's that's the gimmick. And then he gets he basically gets adopted by a monster, like a like a high level boss monster. He's a giant like giant wolf. Who can speak and has been blessed by the goddess of wind or something like that. Basically his goal is to go around this new world and just feast or like cook to his heart's content because in his previous world he did not have the luxury or time to cook and you know just live life to his fullest and I, I really like that. He just like road trips around this new world. <laughs> It's a fun romp. They level up at some point, whatever. It's it's not my biggest priority to know what the plot is or how it's going to go forward. I am just here for the cooking part. Um, The next show is a donghua. I think it was distributed primarily through BDBD until they put it on Netflix. And in the English translations, they call it Cinderella Chef, but it's not Cinderella Chef. It's it. The, the translation is so far off, but whatever. I'll, we'll call it Cinderella Chef for ease of access. All right. And it's about this. Well, she's she's a cook. She's like a well-established cook, and she's got her like special interest in um, cooking with ancient Chinese like methods. And in one like home cooking accident, she eats something that is like something that she didn't know was still like toxic to her and she dies and she wakes up in ancient China. 
I have no idea what the time period is. I didn't look it up. <laughs> I don't even know if it's like a real time period. I'm kind of scared that it is. <laughs> and if I do look it up, I'll be a little mad about like the historical inaccuracies. But still a pretty good show. Um, it's still a cooking show. It has- it's the trashiest romance comedy I've ever watched in a while. Which I usually don't go for romance comedies when I watch something stupid for- for like cheap serotonin. I- I don't go for romance. I am tired. But it's also just like one of those things where you watch a train wreck happen. It's mildly entertaining. And also something about like bitty bitty animated shows. There's something about the humor is just so funny to me. But when when something stupid happens on screen, I'm just like incredulous that this was like released to the public. <laughs> so it's just really it's just a fun rob. I don't I don't wanna hash out the whole romance because it's it's kind of stupid, but again, it's a cooking show. She has like specific moments within all episodes. All episodes. There are three seasons out on Netflix right now. All episodes have at least one moment in it where she does this like whole magical girl transformation where she literally just like ties her sleeves back and her hair up. <laughs> it's the funniest thing they ever do because I just like it feels like I'm watching both a cooking show, a, a stupid rom com, a transmigrator show, and also well technically a time travel show, and also like a magical girl show, it, all in one. And for some reason, cooking affords her this stupid plot armor, and it's so funny. I really like cooking shows and cooking anime. Um, not a lot resonate with me because I think one of the most well known cooking animated shows. Is just like thinly veiled etchy for some reason. My sister has told this, told me this. I have no idea what it's called, and I don't want to know at this point. I'm scared. I'm terrified. <sighs> if anyone's like listening to me right now, don't, don't, do not, do not tell me what it is. I don't care. Okay. On the same vein of like stupid rom coms, well, this isn't a stupid rom com, and this is what surprised me about it. One is Sasaki to Miyano, which is actually romance, and it is slice of life. And it is technically BL. Surprising to me that I would watch a BL anime in 2023. Basically, it's about these two dudes who meet in high school. Yeah, it's it's like a high school romance. I sue me, all right. I I like my I like my trash. And there's this guy who is a fudanchi. He he basically he he loves BL. He's an avid reader. He likes to read a lot, and he is straight. All right, and this is a thing that happens all the time. It's fine, <laughs> but then this guy it takes interest with him, and I, I have to point out that this is an all boys school, right? You can't really avoid like noticing this kind of thing where a guy approaches you and expresses interest in you and your interests and your livelihood and your like the things that you enjoy and the things that you talk about, the way you speak about them. If you're passionate about them, he wants to be passionate about it. It's a really cute romance, is what I'm saying, <laughs> and it's surprisingly mature for a high school romance. Which I, I guess my like my expectations like go below the surface, but like the bare minimum this show did was not use BL tropes to establish this romance. And I've seen a couple, I guess you could say BL enthusiasts, Fujoshi, hate on this specific anime because it feels like a critique to BL. But like, it's one of the most genuinely mature things I've ever watched an anime do where a straight guy realizes another guy is in love with him and puts it, like, he puts it on the table. He keeps it there. He doesn't turn it down immediately. He doesn't like cringe. He doesn't react negatively. He says, I'll think about your confession. Give me some time. It's not a no. And it's it's very mature about it. And like, it's a slow burn. It's a sweet little anime. It has some really fun jokes in it. And, <laughs> and it really kind of just like gives you food for thought when it comes to what it means to be in love or how to receive affection or how you think affection should be like and whether or not you should be basing those expectations on fiction because that's your only mode of like understanding what to do in that situation. Let's be clear here. A lot of BL 
bases itself on sexual harassment, and I can't not ignore that, and it makes me uncomfortable, so I try to avoid it when I can. Yes, this includes the fact that I have read Tianzhou and did actually enjoy the story, but again, if you've, you know, it's a whole thing where you have to be critical of what you're watching, or blah, yada, yada, yada. And because I'm critical of what I am watching, I don't engage all too much about things that I know will just make me icky or just make me feel uncomfortable on the get-go. I watch things to challenge myself, but also, you know, when I'm depressed, I don't want to watch things to challenge myself. Sometimes I want to watch something and enjoy it. Sometimes if it does not pan out to be something that I will enjoy, I want to watch something to just hate it and complain about it. And Sasaki to Miyano, I'll admit, I wa- like, walked into that expecting to hate it, but since I was expecting to hate it, I was delighted to enjoy it. Moving on. <laughs> Yet another romance, high school romance anime that I-, I didn't expect to like, because this one is Reverse Harem. I just do not like the idea of harem as a genre. Having a cast of characters fall in love with one person feels weird. This one I gave a chance because at least from the get-go I thought it was gonna be like one of those reverse harems. If it turned out to be something that I hated, I would stop immediately like from the second episode or something because <laughs> I'm that kind of person. I would open a book, read the first chapter, and then if I don't vibe with the first chapter, I'll put it down. So Romantic Killer, it's about this girl who is being terrorized by this demon who <laughs> came from a video game, I guess. Like came in the form of a video game, I would say, and they basically told her that she signed up for a fixer-upper and the goal of this fixer-upper thing was to make her fall in love with someone and the way they were going to go about it was to take away all of the things that she liked her cat video games and chocolate and apparently according to this demon she basically has been ignoring things around her her environment all the people around her the relationships she may may or may not foster because of these three things or three interests i would say and in taking away those three interests like all the suitors would like fall in line or something like that the first few episodes it just feels a little psychological horror thriller for laughs and you do get like a little bit of it like seeping in like you're getting a little like unsettled by the idea that this demon literally sent her parents off to another fucking country and stole her cat and like won't let her play video games or eat chocolate but the longer you watch the more like it just i can't not spoil <laughs> i can't not spoil my talk about it for too long but basically like these people that have been lining up for her weren't there because the demon put them there they were mostly there because they met by chance and they were attracted to her and to her strong suits and basically just like her like to her at- her attitude personality her convictions it's a little tropey but like you get to like the last three episodes it's a very short series um i know there's probably like a season two no the last three episodes turn really really weird like it like, the the whiplash of the the thematic whiplash is kind of wild but also this is the same thing as sasaku no Miyano, where it treats these ideas of what is romance and what do we base love off of and how do we react to affection given to us and how do we give out affection to others like how do we go about that what are relationships yada 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 it's 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 some really good writing there um surrounded by a whole lot of surprisingly bili bili humor <laughs> like i'm not gonna lie a lot of bili bili don't want humor in there um while i was watching it reminded me a lot of god troubles me that one's funny but it's not like it's not within the themes of this i didn't actually watch that i am planning to my sister like stumbled on it um, while scrolling through Netflix and was surprised that there were Donghua on Netflix at this point. But like, yeah, um, it has the same like humor as God Troubles Me, which is very... Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> just it's very like internet humor y where you, it, it also like bases a lot on like shock value sometimes <laughs> but yeah it's more comedy than romance too sometimes the romance will amp up but it's more like comedy drama than it is romance comedy even though it's called romantic killer and a lot of like even like when you go into the tags it will look like it's a lot of shipping in there but it's not i swear it's not it's more platonic stuff which is funny because it's called romantic killer right <laughs> i've talked to aline about this um uh recently my trend in writing has been to write a ship that is technically romantic and i will write about them and their lives and the relationships they have in their life and then i will not write about their relationship because that's that's exactly what's been pointed out in both sasaka Tomiyano and romantic killer is that when you write about romance, you often forget about the lives of the people within that ro relationship. You almost always focus on the development of that relationship, but never on like the circumstances that each of them are in. Are they going through some stuff that you think should be prioritized over forming a relationship with someone else? Because that's something that I am very weirded out about like romance these days. Who are these people outside of each other? because not a lot of people focus on it. I do have a couple like shows I have lined up in case I do get into another funk. Again, I just opened my Netflix account. <laughs> so I'll just, I'll just go through the list to see what they are. Um, so I've been I've been planning on getting back into Kimi no Todoke. I was really into it when I was in like junior high school, I would say. I was really into it at that age because I don't know. I was into any kind of anime I would stumble upon. I was a weeb. Um, Alright, there's d No Doubt in Us. I also watched No Doubt in Us. This is another Donghua that I didn't expect to like. It's one of those like that I would say would be more in the Cinderella Chef category of the trashy rom-com with some aspects of it that I like outside of the trashy rom-com. There's some court drama in there, some intrigue, some political intrigue. There's some martial arts involved. <laughs> um, it's it's my trash. It's my hole in the Amikahara Fall. Another anime I think I have lined up. Well, this one's a movie and I, you know how, how well I take watching movies. <laughs> Um, a Silent Voice I actually read the, the one-shot manga when it came out like years ago, but when it turned into like a movie, I never watched it, so I, I feel like I, sh I would enjoy watching it. My sister didn't want to watch it with me, so. There's Hell's Paradise, which it, I'm now watching this one on Netflix. I'm probably going to be pirating like an English dub of this because I want to watch it for Alejandro Sub for absolutely no reason, don't worry about it. Then there's Bochi the Rock. This one I am very excited about. I've heard multiple people vouch for it and I am very excited about it. I like I like slice of life anime that explores more than just romance and I'm not afraid to admit that. But yeah, I, th I think that's it. I, again, I'll probably add more to this <laughs> eventually. <laughs> kind of intrigued by the plot of Link Click, but it's that seems like a plot heavy thing that I'll probably be like I'll put it on like the category of Kipo where I'd like it because it, of its like seriousness. Same with Hell's Paradise probably. Thanks for hanging around. That's a lot of rambling for me. I'll probably edit this down as much as I can, hopefully. That's my current watch list. I, I do recommend those if you also have the problem of, you know, doom spiraling. These are some really nice dumb animated shows to just watch if you want. I have no idea when that next structured video essay is gonna come out. Eventually, probably, because I can't not create stuff. <laughs> it's I feel like it's in my blood at this point. Oh right, I promised that I was going to read this like DSTL fanfic- a uh, DSTL, whatever. <laughs> whatever, I don't know. Um, I was- I promised I was gonna read it, but I did and I deleted the file. Not because I didn't want it coming out, but because I was clearing out files, I- a lot of my logic files like pile up. They are- there are so many and they- they take so much space. So I, I accidentally deleted it. So here we are. 
and I I don't know if I'll continue with that. I'll I'll check in on Gab. I'll <laughs> I'll have to at this point. I'm sorry. I promised, but I didn't get to it. Whatever. If you guys are listeners of the Secret Treehouse, please listen to the Secret Treehouse. <laughs> I pour my heart and soul editing those episodes. All right, please just listen to the Secret Treehouse. <laughs> the energy of this little video thing is the same as the secret tree house so if you guys want more of this kind of kind of energy go there what do i always say right stay safe bye